Hey everyone, it's Anson here, and today I'm gonna to upgrade my 2013 MacBook Pro to unsupported macOS Sequoia 15.1. I've put off this update for a few days because I'm actually traveling abroad. I'm in Brazil right now, my favorite country, so just a quick shout out to all the Brazilians out there. Oi, brasileiros, tudo bem? But this has actually been a really good opportunity for me to test out this computer. So I've been traveling for about two and a half weeks now here in Brazil. This is the only computer I brought with me. I've been using it almost every day. I've been using Adobe Creative Suite with Photoshop. As you can see, my video editor ScreenFlow is working, which is also my screen recorder. Um, then, you know, Safari works, Google Chrome, all your normal stuff. It's been working great for me. Again, 2013 MacBook Pro rank. Right now it's running 15.0 Sequoia, but we are going to upgrade this thing to 15.0. I just want to mention that I've been reading through all of your comments on my original upgrade video and I know a lot of people have been having success and a lot of people have been having issues and I just want to mention that I pretty much answered all of the questions that I see coming in in my video that talks about was upgrading to unsupported Sequoia worth it. So check that video out if you haven't seen it yet and if you're having problems with the install. 15.1 does give you access to Apple intelligence, but not on these Intel Macs. However, there are some security updates that come with 15.1, so I wanna get those on this computer. Plus, it's the first incremental update that I'm doing with unsupported Sequoia, and it's the first incremental update that I'm doing with OpenCore Legacy Patcher 2. Now, as with other incremental updates, we actually essentially have to reinstall the entire OS, so it does take quite some time, and I'll let you know at the end how long it took. So without further ado, let's get this old friend upgraded to unsupported macOS Sequoia 15.1. The first thing that we wanna do is open up OpenCore Legacy Patcher, and if you have just like restarted your computer or you've just installed it, uh, you should get a pop-up that is saying that you should upgrade your OpenCore Patcher installation to the newest version. So you can see the pop-up right here. So it's telling me that we now have OpenCore Legacy Patcher 2.1. So let's go ahead and download and install that first thing. So you can see it's preparing the download and that took about 15 seconds. Okay, that install took a little less than a minute. So it's asking me if I'd like to update open core and my root volume patches and every single time guys, yes. If you don't know whether you should do this, you should do it, okay? So we'll just hit yes. You can see that it goes through the build and install open core right there and now we'll hit install to disk. Going to select our hard drive. Going to select the EFI volume. Now it asks if we wanna do root patches, yes we do. Go ahead and start root patching. Just always a good idea. Like I said, no matter what, just do it. If you're having any issues, do the root patches every single time, guys. All right, guys, that part finished took almost exactly five minutes, and now it's asking me if I wanna reboot to apply the changes. Absolutely. Restart. All right, so now we've updated OpenCore Legacy Patcher, but we haven't yet updated our operating system. So if I go to the Apple menu and go to About This Mac, you'll see that I'm still running Sequoia 15.0. And if we go into our system settings, you'll notice it says that there's one update. And if we go to the software update section, it might take a minute to search for it, but it will tell us that there's a 15.1 update available. Now you can try running it through the system settings here. However, I've found that this doesn't work that well, both in the past on older versions of OpenCore Legacy Patcher and with Sonoma and now with Sequoia. So what we wanna do instead is we're, not, we're still not gonna need a flash drive, but we wanna go ahead and open up OpenCore Legacy Patcher. So just go ahead and open up the application like we did earlier. And then with OpenCore Legacy Patcher open, we're just going to click on Create Mac OS Installer. We're going to click Download Mac OS Installer. Then you'll notice from our list of installers, we have Sequoia 15.1 as an option. So we're just going to click download. Now, obviously this is gonna take a few minutes. It depends on the speed of your internet connection. You can see for me, it says it's gonna take maybe 10 minutes, but I think it's actually gonna be less than that. So let's see how long it takes. All right, so you can see the download finished. It took about five minutes here on my current connection here in Sao Paulo, Brazil and now it's validating the Mac OS installer. This will also take a few minutes. So that actually only took about one minute flat. 
Now it's extracting the macOS installer. Okay, so that took a little bit over a minute. And now it's asking us if we want to create an installer and we actually don't need to because we already have open core installed. So we'll just click no here. And we can actually quit out of open core legacy patcher at this point. And before you go any further, if you have any files on your computer that you want backed up, definitely make sure you back them up. I wouldn't recommend using a time machine backup with unsupported installs, but move any folders or files that you definitely don't want to use over to an external drive or a flash drive. And then from here in your applications folder, you're going to look for the install macOS Sequoia application. You'll notice it was updated today. So I can just double click on that. And you'll notice that it pops up the installation screen so we can click continue. We will agree to the terms and conditions, hit agree again choose the hard drive that we want to install Sequoia on and click continue. Go ahead and enter your password and click unlock. And you can see right now it says about 58 minutes remaining, but we'll see how long that actually takes. So despite saying it would take an hour, it only took about 12 minutes. It hung on the 28 minute mark for a long time and then finished right to the end. So now we can go ahead and restart the computer. So now we're going to actually boot into our hard drive, not the installer. And this restart is gonna take longer than a normal restart because we just did a relatively large system update. You may notice that during the restart, we actually get a loading screen and mine says about nine minutes remaining. That's because it is finishing off the update. Okay, so that restart finished and you can see I'm now at a login screen, but my mouse is moving very slow and this isn't my background. So I can tell that I'm in desperate need of some post install patches. So I'm gonna enter my password. The screen's kind of flickering in and out. Hopefully we can get into the system here. You can see each keystroke is almost causing my mouse to spin. I think if I had used a flash drive for this, this might not be as big of a problem. But we're gonna try and, I just entered my password. Let's see if that's going to work. And then I can hit enter and see if we can get in to run those post install patches. Okay, so you can see we've now logged in and uh, I don't know, we can click on about here and see what it says, see if we're at 15.1. You can see we are on 15.1. But again, this isn't my background and things are a little slow. So let's go ahead and let's open up Open Core Legacy Patcher so we can run these post install patch updates. So I'm just going and find Open Core Patcher. And now you'll see we have this option over here, post install root patch. If you guys have watched my other videos, you've done this before. We'll click on that and then we will click on start root patching. And it's gonna go through its process of installing the root patches. Okay, so we can see that the post install patches have finished. There's a little notification letting us know that an extension was updated. That is the open core patcher and some of the drivers. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to reboot to apply these changes. All right, so just going to boot back up to Mac OS and you can already see this loading screen. It has the big Apple logo. This looks more like with our drivers installed. Okay, so we're back to what looks like a normal login screen, so I'm just gonna log in. All right, so this definitely looks like the background that I started with and that my drivers are now installed properly. Let's go ahead and click on the Apple menu and go to About This Mac. And you can see that I'm now running Mac OS Sequoia 15.1 on my 2013 MacBook Pro. All right, so here I am on 15.1. It was a little bit more sketchy doing it without a flash drive, although now you know that it is possible. If I was in my studio or had a 32 gigabyte flash drive or larger available to me, I probably would have used that and done the install in the exact same way that I did the initial Sequoia install, which you can check out in this video right here. And if you're having any trouble doing any of these installs, this video down at the bottom goes through all of the potential troubleshooting solutions that you can have when doing these updates. So I hope it was helpful and I hope that you can get your unsupported Mac on 15.1 as well. That's all I've got for you for today. I'm Anson Alexander and I'll see you guys in the next one.